Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It feels like I've been stuck in this 2500 elo for way too long. I didn't have much luck in the Great League Remix. I hit Veteran really early in the season and then I just got stuck there. So I finally got to go positive with the team that I'm going to show you guys today. I climbed so much, almost 200 points, and it is going to be in the Great League Fantasy Cup. I absolutely love this cup. I know some people don't enjoy it, but I really like that it brings some of the Pokemon that we almost never get to see and makes them meta. Like, we almost never get to see Shadow Flygon, Slurpuff, uh, what else? Mawile, but I mean, Mawile's not that good in this cup. Uh, Chertinator, that's another really unique one. So I'm having a really good time and I want you guys to have a good time as well. So I'm going to show you guys what I learned in my battles and if you guys want to run this team you can flygon is an absolute monster that is what i learned it is so good against everything and i don't think it has any counters aside from fairy types with charm like the charmers oh also whimsicott whimsicott is absolutely going to destroy flygon unfortunately and uh Shenotic if you run into one but flygon is so strong i am using it as a safe swap on this team the team is going to be Escav lead with Azu in the back and Flygon on the safe swap. So the idea is that you have two things in the back that will counter Turtonator for your lead, which is going to be really weak to fire types. Now, most of the time, the Flygon is going to draw out an Azumarill. And what a lot of people don't realize is Flygon actually destroys Azumarill. The Scorching Sands will do so much damage to it. And I did have before Earth Power on this Flygon, I went ahead and I TM'd it off for Scorching Sands because two Scorching Sands with the Mudshot damage is going to be enough to take an Azumarill out. And also you, you reach those Scorching Sands a lot faster than you can get to the Earth Powers, so its matchups are going to be a lot better against some of the Steel types that can reach moves pretty quickly. I'd say some of the biggest weaknesses for this team are going to be Whimsicott and Slurpuff and Shenotic. They are a little bit tricky to deal with. I have been able to beat them but most of the times I will lose against those if they are in the back, if I'm not able to align Escav to them. Even Escav will struggle against them, but at least it will get them low and in a place where Azumarill can take them out. I will say when I started playing this team, I was seeing a lot less of those Pokemon. Now I'm seeing them a lot more, so the meta has shifted. Skarmory is another tricky one, but I will show you guys how I counter Skarmory later on in the video. But anyways, that's enough rambling from me. I have so many battles to show you guys. I did take a few battles out of all five sets that I played yesterday because again, I climbed a lot and I really wanted to show you guys the journey. It was a 200 point climb in only one day's worth of sets. Okay, on to the first match that I am going to commentate on. We are going to see an Alolan Ninetales lead. My opponent is going to safe swap into Azumarill. As I said in my previous video, I like to throw the Acid Spray and then I'll bring my own Azumarill in. That way I can guarantee that I can win this switch. As always, because of the debuff, I'm only going to need two play roughs, whereas my opponent is going to need a little bit over three. I'm gonna go for the first play rough here, take out most of his health, and then going to go for another play rough one bubble before my opponent reaches their next move. We're able to take that Azumarill out and then I'm able to also reach a play rough on this Alolan and Ninetales, which is actually going to be very good for me because I really have to take this out and I don't want my Flygon to see it. It is absolutely going to destroy Flygon if it lines up with it. And my opponent has a Turtonator in the back, so I immediately swap into Flygon. Flygon is absolutely going to destroy Turtonator. I'm just going to go for the Dragon Claws. They should be enough to KO from this range. I'm going to go for another Dragon Claw before my opponent threw their move. They were at the move, but then they went for the extra Incinerate. But either way, I would have won one CMP. And then we're able to take the Turtonator out, bring Escav back in, and take the Alolan Ninetales out. GG's to our opponent. Moving on to the next match, we are going to be met with a Flygon. Now let's all learn a valuable lesson here. Flygons are always going to shield the move that you throw no matter what, so I should be going for Acid Spray here. I'll show you guys in a later match what a difference the Acid Spray would make. They go ahead and they shield the Drill Run, and because I wasn't able to debuff it with that Acid Spray, the Azumarill will actually have a tougher matchup against the Flygon. It will have to take a move from it. 
But that doesn't matter because they farm our escav down and then they swap out with so much energy on their flygon and then they bring a slurpuff in and the slurpuff is absolutely going to destroy my azu at least we're able to land the hydro pump so i have to bring flygon here and go for a full farm down on the slurpuff really hoping my opponent brings the flygon back in but they don't they bring a ferrothorn in i went for the dragon claw immediately because of how much energy that flygon has but because they bring Ferrothorn in, they're able to catch that Dragon Claw. I could have gone for a Scorching Sands on this Ferrothorn and taken it out. But because of how much energy they have on their Flygon, I felt like there was no point shielding anything from that Ferrothorn. So GG's to our opponent. We're going to take a loss there. On to the next match, we are going to be met with a Lucario on the lead, which is really good for us. I just have to watch out for the Blaze Kick, but my opponent is going to safe swap a Weezing. I'm going to bring Flygon in immediately. Now, I've learned that they always throw the Sludge on the first move, so I really shouldn't shield the first move. I, I shield it anyways, and I'm going to go ahead and shield the next move as well, which is really bad on my part. Now they're actually going to be able to outpace us. To the next move that they're gonna throw and i think here they go for an overheat let's see yes it is an overheat we're both two shields down so because their attack is dropped right now because of the overheat i'm gonna bring azumarill and i'm going to farm this wheezing down completely and have so much energy if they decide to come in with lucario i can one shot it with the hydro pump but they bring in azu in and i am ahead by a lot of energy so i'm just gonna go for these play roughs and i'm always going to try to be ahead by some energy in case my opponent swaps in lucario i'm gonna bring my escav in here and hope that they don't have hydro pump if they had hydro pump oh well i just need to get one drill run worth of damage off on this azu that way if i maintain my energy lead on my azumarill i'll be able to take both the lucario and the azumarill out with my own azu so I'm going to be able to go for a Hydro Pump here before the Lucario can reach a move. I don't want the Lucario to reach a move because if they do, this Azu will be able to take us out with one play rough. But we are going to have the health advantage and my opponent sees that and they top left. So GG's to our opponent. And that gives us a 4-1 in this first set that I showed you. Now the first first set that I showed you guys that I didn't commentate on, I got a 5-0, but I didn't record the first two battles. I started recording after when I saw that I was doing really well with the team. So, so far, 5041. But, anyways, moving on, we are going to see an Azumarill lead. Now, I like to soft lose this lead. I won't use any shields on my Azcav. What I learned is if you save shields for Flygon, Flygon is usually going to be able to sweep, unless they have a Whimsicott in the back. Also, surprisingly, a lot of the Azus I was running into were not running Hydro Pump, so a lot of them were going for double Ice Beam on my Escav. I was okay with this. I would be able to land two Drill Runs, put them in the red, and then I can bring Flygon in and start going for an Energy Lead. Now, my opponent has a Slurpuff in the back, so I'm going to stay in this and double shield my Flygon. I should be able to outpace to the third Scorching Sands against the Slurpuff. But I'm not going to need to because they go ahead and they no shield the second one and because I get two attack drops I'm going to be able to comfortably bring Azu here and the energy balls are not going to be doing as much as they would have if uh, the Slurpuff wasn't debuffed. So I'm able to take two energy balls on Azu and my opponent has a Flygon in the back. I did watch for a catch but because their Azu is still very healthy I'm going to have to go for a play rough on it anyways and then I can reach a play rough on the Flygon, take their final shield, and now I can bring my own Flygon in and go for a Dragon Claw. But because their Flygon is not Shadow, they're going to be able to survive with very little HP, unfortunately for us, but because Azu is still alive in the back, I'll be able to bubble it down. So GG's to our opponent, we're going to take that win. Moving on to the next match, we are going to see a Flygon on the lead, and here you will see what a difference the Acid Spray is going to make. Of course, I am expecting my opponent to shield. They did go ahead and CMP tie with us, and we won CMP over the Flygon. So Flygon actually surprisingly loses CMP to a lot of Pokemon. So we're able to take a shield from them and debuff them and get them really, really low. Now, as you can come in and farm down, they go for a Scorching Sands, but that's fine. They'll only be able to get one off, where if they had had more health, they would be able to get a second one off. So Az is going to be able to take that just fine, and then they bring a Skarmory in. And as I said before, Skarmory is a little bit tricky for this team to deal with. Unfortunately, these Scorching Sands are not 
going to be doing too much to it because they are going to be resisted and I have to go for a three to get the Skarmory out of the way. So I'm going to bring Azu back in now and I attempt to go for a farm down but my opponent swaps out. They swap out with a lot of energy on Skarmory by the way and they bring a Tabu Fini in. I'm going to be resisting the fast move but the Moonblast is going to be doing enough to take our Azu out here. They do go for a Surf however, so they're going to be able to land another Surf. We're already in the red, so this is not looking good. The Skarmory is going to be able to reach a Sky Attack on our Azu as well, so GG's, we're basically going to take this loss and we're not going to be able to win this. It was close though, so I'm not completely unhappy with that loss. But anyways, moving on to the next match, we are going to see another Flygon lead. We're seeing so many Flygon leads, but as we've learned, we're going to go for the Acid Spray, debuff the Flygon, and because this is Shadow, they are definitely going to shield this, but they are able to catch the Acid Spray on an Azu. This is actually fine. Because we debuff them, I'm going to be able to take them out with two play roughs again, and they're not going to be able to take my Azu out, so I'm definitely going to be able to win this switch. I'm just going to try to be ahead by some energy, so I'm going to throw the second play rough one bubble before they reach their third play rough. That way I have a ton of energy on my Azu. Wait, did I do that? I didn't do that. And I actually remember why I didn't do that. I saw that I won CMP over their Azu and I wanted to preserve the health so that I could take this flag on out. So I went ahead and I threw on CMP to take their Azu out and now I have a lot of health on my Azu in case I still need it, and it looks like I am going to need it because they have a Skarmory in the back, so I'm actually happy with how I played it. I was also able to catch the Scorching Sands on the S-Cab in case you missed it, but now we are going to be able to land a Hydro Pump on the Skarmory, and that is going to put them in the red, and my Flygon is now going to be able to take care of the Skarmory. They debuff themselves. I was probably going to be able to farm them down completely with the Mud Shots, but they swap out and I have two Dragon Claws, gonna go for them back to back against their Flygon, take it out, and then go for a Dragon Claw on the Skarmory and take that out as well. So GG's to our opponent. And that is going to be another 4-1 set. As I said, I cut a lot of battles out because I have an entire day worth of battles to show you guys. So I had to pick some of the best ones, some of the best losses and some of the best battles that I played. So couldn't show them all. Ooh, this next battle is really good. Guess what the lead is? That's right, it's going to be another Flygon. As I said, we go for the Acid Spray, but this time they actually swap into Azu, so I am going to go for an Acid Spray anyways because I want to debuff it again to win the switch. I'm gonna bring my own Azu in and let the play rough go. It's not going to be doing too much. I'm gonna be able to take it out before they take us out. Now this time I do what I said I was going to do in the last match. I am going to throw the next play rough one bubble before they can reach another move. That way I have a little bit of energy. I was just able to get one fast move worth of energy on my Azu, but that's still something. That way I'm going to be able to reach a play rough on this Tapu Fini, and it looks like they're going to have a Tapu Fini in the back, so I'm going to have to be very careful with my Flygon. I have energy on S-Cap. I swapped out with a move, so I'm going to bring it here and take their first shield with the drill run. At least I can get a shield out of the way because I need shields down for my Flygon to have a better matchup against theirs, and their Flygon has energy. I'm going to go ahead and shield whatever this is here, expecting a Surf, but they let me get a few mud shots in. That's going to be fine. I'm going to go for a Dragon Claw on this Flygon. I used my last shield. Now I have to make a catch. I'm able to catch the Dragon Claw on my Azu and save my Flygon. Now I'm going to be able to land this Dragon Claw because shields are down. Take the Flygon out and I just have to reach a Dragon Claw on this Tapu Fini before it can reach another Surf. Take that out as well and we take that win. GG's to our opponent. That catch saved me. On to the next match, we are going to see a Skarmory on the lead. This is actually fine because we are resisting the fast move because it's not going to be running Air Slash anymore, it's running Steel Wing, so Escap is going to be resisting that. The flying moves are going to be neutral, however, I have to watch out for a Brave Bird, but I called a Sky Attack here and I was able to survive it and get to another drill run, but my opponent catches it on a Flygon, which I'm actually okay with because any damage I can do to a Flygon is going to be really good for me to bring my Azu in and then potentially take it out before they can reach another move as well. And they are running Earth Power, so I'm going to go for that play rough for sure because 
two earth powers are going to be enough to take Azu out. And they bring Skarmory back in, but I'm also able to reach a play rough on the Skarmory and take it out. And my opponent has a Stunfisk in the back, so they are going to top left because I have Flygon, and Flygon is absolutely going to eat Stunfisk alive. Speaking of Pokemon that eat each other, this Turtonator is absolutely going to destroy my Ascap, so I swap immediately into Flygon, and we draw out a Charmer. They have a Wigglytuff, this is so bad for me, but at least... I'm able to land a Scorching Sands, and the Scorching Sands does a decent chunk of damage to this uh, Wigglytuff. Now I'm going to bring Escav back in and fully farm it down, and I'm not going to shield anything from the Wigglytuff. They're just going to go for an Icy Wind, which is going to be resisted. Unfortunately, my Switch Timer is not up yet, so I had to take an Incinerate on my Escav. I'm not sure if I would have been able to flip this match in my favor if I hadn't taken that Incinerate. But anyways, they do give us a shield for the drill run. I'm able to bring Azu in now and go for a Hydro Pump and they no shield the Hydro Pump and they have a Whimsicott in the back. Unfortunately, I do not have Ice Beam on my uh, Azu. They also have a shield left, so this first play rough is going to take their final shield and then I'm going to shield here just so that I can get the play rough off. I go for the play rough, it's not going to be enough to KO this Whimsicott and I... Here, I wasn't sure if I would have been able to make that Acid Spray if I had not taken that Incinerate, so not sure. I think the Whimsicott would, ha would have still won that anyways, so GG's to her opponent. On to the next match, we're going to see another Skarmory lead, but this time they swap immediately into Flygon, so I'm going to go for that Acid Spray before swapping out. We managed to take a shield from them as expected, and now I can bring Azu in. Unfortunately, they are going to be running Earth Power and they are going to be able to reach another one before I can reach that play rough, but because they're not Shadow, two are not going to be enough to take us out. Now I do decide to go for the full farm down, that way I can have energy for Skarmory. I'm gonna go for this Hydro Pump. Hopefully it will land. It lands because my opponent does not want to give up their final shield and they have a, uh, what's this thing called? Haxorus, that's what it's called. A Haxorus in the back. I'm gonna be able to outpace to the Dragon Claws of my Flygon. It looks like my opponent knows this, so they let the Haxorus go, probably hoping that Skarmory can win it for them. But I'm going to bring Escav in, go for a drill run, and it's going to do a lot of damage to that Skarmory. I could also reach a Scorching Sands on my Flygon, so there was no point in my opponent shielding there. So GG's to our opponent. And that's another positive set. Moving on to the next match, we're going to see an unfortunate lead of Turtonator. I'm immediately going to swap into Flygon, and I am going to try to win this Azu matchup as much as I can. I'm gonna go for the first Scorching Sands. It lands, of course, and then I'm going to shield the Play Rough. Because they have Play Rough, this matchup is going to be a lot more in Flygon's favor. The next Scorching Sands is going to take their first shield, and then this next one is going to take their second shield, so they are both shields down, and I am going to be able to reach another Scorching Sands. This is how spammy this thing is. TMing Earth Power off of it was so worth it. I know that was the Community Day move, but completely worth it. And now I have alignment. I'm going to be able to align Azu against Turtonator. They have a Whimsicott in the back. I'm gonna go immediately for the Acid Sprays. Now the Moon Blasts are going to hurt my Escav and I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it to another move. So that is going to be unfortunate, but I have a little bit of energy on Azu, so I might be able to reach the play rough before my opponent can reach a Grass Knot. We're able to reach it. That's gonna be really good for us. Let's see what this Turtonator is running. A lot of them were running uh, Flash Cannon, so Flash Cannon is going to hurt a little bit more than uh, the other moves that this Turtonator has. So they are running Flash Cannon, but I have Hydro Pump, and they live with 1 HP, but we're also going to be able to live this Flash Cannon with a little bit of HP and take the Turtonator out. GG's to our opponent. On to the next match, we are going to see a Ferrothorn on the lead, which is really good for us, but then my opponent swaps into a Flygon, and I have to debuff it before swapping out, so I'm going to go for the Acid Spray. At least we take a shield, but I, I am going to have to shield as well, because they reach the Scorching Sands, and it will do so much damage to Escav, and I make a huge mistake here. I bring Azu in, I catch the Dragon Claw at least, but I bring Azu in and they have a Ferrothorn in the back and now Ferrothorn is aligned to my Azu. I probably should have just committed to staying in with Escav and I also wasn't counting right. 
I lost track of my opponent's energy and it cost me big time because if I knew they were going, going to throw a Dragon Claw, Dragon Claw is resisted, I could have easily taken that on Ascav, taken the flag on out, and then based on what they had in the back, I can swap. Now, this Ferrothorn is going to have so much energy because I brought an Azumarill into it. Really bad play on my part. Really dumb. I don't know why I did that. And they have Azu in the back. Our Escav is going to be aligned to it, unfortunately. I only have one shield left. I have to reach a Scorching Sands before they can reach a move. If they let this go, this is going to be good. Then I don't have to use a shield here. They let it go at least. So I'm going to go ahead and shield here, but like I said, they're going to have so much energy on this Ferrothorn. I managed to bait with the Dragon Claw and get their final shield, but I'm not going to be able to make it to another move before this Ferrothorn can make it to another Power Whip, and that Power Whip is going to be enough to KO. I played that so bad. Moving on, we are going to see a Tapu Fini lead. This is another lead that's a little bit tricky to deal with. I'm actually not sure if I should swap or stay in. I decide to swap into Azu. And my opponent brings in Registeel, but they let me get a lot of energy on Azu before they swap. So I'm going to be able to land a Hydro Pump, and I might be able to land a second Hydro Pump as well. But unfortunately, we are going to get an attack debuff, so this Hydro Pump is not going to be enough to KO the Registeel. I think I would have been able to take it out if it weren't for that attack debuff. But now they're going to take us out with a Focus Blast, and I'm going to bring Escav back in, counter it down. And let's see what my opponent decides to do. They bring Churtinator here and I go for a drill run. At least we get a shield, but I still had to take that incinerate and I could have done two counters in the time that they did that incinerate, but it's looking really bad for us right now because their Tapu Fini is still very healthy. I'm gonna let the first surf go, shield the second surf, and then let's see if my opponent decides to shield the Scorching Sands. They don't, we're able to take it out. This Dragon Claw will take their final shield, but I need to reach another one, so I'm going to do one mud shot, transfer the damage onto my 1 HP Escav, but I'm not able to make it to the Dragon Claw before the damage from the next Incinerate registers on my Flygon, so they're able to take us out. GG's to our opponent. Now moving on to the final match of the video, thank you guys if you've made it this far. We are going to see a really nice lead of Magnezone. My opponent immediately swaps into Azumarill. I'm going to go for the Acid Spray as I always do and then swap into my own Azu. I'm going to let the first play rough go and then I am going to go for my own play rough. And it looks like I am going to lose CMP, so definitely not going to go for CMP on the next one. So we know that I should throw before my opponent reaches the next move so that I could get this off gonna go for this play rough it should be enough to take it out and then they are going to bring magnezone in but i don't want them to farm me down so i'm going to swap a flygon in let them bring whatever they have in the back that's fine it is a tapu fini and we go for a scorching sands and we manage to get the attack drop this is really good and we're going to go for another scorching sands expecting my opponent to shield again they do and this time i decide to let my flygon go because i want to save a shield in case the magnezone gets to a move but my opponent is going to go ahead and throw a surf here and actually i see that i can win this if i double up on the drill run so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm just one counter away i know that my opponent needs one more volt switch to get to a wild charge so i'm able to safely reach that second drill run in the middle of my opponent's volt switch take the magnezone out and then take that win gg's to our opponent and that leaves us off at 2734. We are so close to expert and it has taken me way too long this season to get to it. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoy my videos, please consider subscribing, leave a like, it helps me out so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.